Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. We're going to go through this morning's session of London FX and CFD trading charts of interest. Uh, before we get started, take a look at the risk disclaimers. We'll take 10 or 15 seconds and do so now. Alrighty then, let's uh, let's get started here. If I uh, sneeze or I sound a little nasally or raspy, kind of fighting fighting some allergies here, so bear with me. <laughs> that time of uh, it's time of the year, right? All right, so let's take a look at the. Uh, if I could get an audio and visual check though first, uh, someone wants to give me a an okay. On the uh, the audio visual, that'd be great. I'd appreciate that. Uh, I'm showing that everything's working fine on my end, uh, but I want to make sure that I'm not talking to and presenting to myself. Okay, everything looks like it's uh, looks like we're okay here to go. All right, so we got the dollar index here, right? So um, take a look at that first. The trend is clearly uh, is clearly lower at this time. Uh, we've got you know we've got a lower high here, uh, a lower low from over here. We're also working on another lower low here off of this this trend line going back to uh, about the third week of July. And to add additionally from a longer term standpoint, this is something that we've been discussing uh, recently. And I've been talking about this for quite some time just because it's been in play for quite some time. But we have this cross-sectional trend line that goes all the way back uh, to April uh, of last year. And as we can see here, it's it's gotten a lot of play. You know, it's not it's not an, an exact area, right, which most support, resistance, trend lines, etc. aren't. Uh, but what we've got here is, you know, we've got a lot of play around this trend line. You know, even back here after... After we had the the pop off of the Brexit uh, fiasco, you know, it, it was an it was an approximate area of support once it broke above, uh, and it has posed uh, as resistance now uh, after breaking below. You know, it was only up there for maybe what a day, uh, day and a half before re reverting back below. Uh, this trend line so it's still something from a, a longer term standpoint that seems to be in play and sometimes you get these lines of influence that will stay in play for a much longer period of time than than uh, maybe you would ever anticipate and, and actually this one is just continuing to exert its influence uh, so it's definitely something worth noting as kind of a, a bull a bull and bear line in the sand if you will uh, so right now we've got, you know, we're trading below that and we've got this lower low, lower high situation going on. So right now the dollar index is, is certainly postured uh, in, in more of a bearish than bullish fashion. Uh, it's a little sloppy, a little choppy right now, right? It's the end, it's getting the end of August. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of vacation time being uh, spent right now. So you know, until we move into really like the second week of September, uh, market volumes and volatility can be low, uh, sans any real major catalyst. Uh, so choppy, choppy trading uh, can be the, the result of that. Uh, oftentimes, this is not the best environment to trade in. And with that said, you know, we need to take it slow and, and, and be selective in the setups that we do take. Uh, and we do getting back to the dollar index though we've got this this bottom side trend line we could get wedged up down in here now that that could either result in a in a spill lower uh, towards this 11,700 area or you know it could e it could even break to the upside now that's something that we still have not really developed out enough we need to get down here towards the apex uh, before we, we can really consider this to be a a nice technical descending wedge, uh, something which we'll have to be patient on, uh, but it's certainly a possibility. Now, looking at some of the individual pairs, uh, we'll start out with cable. Now, cable, 
uh, again, you know, we're in that choppy environment in the U.S. dollar, generally speaking, right? So some of the, you know, some of the, some of the currency can go one way, some of them will go another way, and, and you know, that's that's the the end net result is, you know, a sloppy dollar. Uh, one, you know, we've got this this trend line up here uh, in in pound dollar, right? That that I'm kind of looking at as as a possible area of resistance. So I'm I'm keeping my uh, this is this is something on my radar to see how it, it reacts at this trend line. Good morning, Craig. Thank you. Uh, we've got this trend line coming down here. Uh, you know, coming back from almost a couple months now, and you know, post Brexit, what we could be building here if we do turn lower from around this 132.50 up to let's say 133. If we do turn lower, you know, we've got here, we can see here, we've got, you know, somewhat of a symmetrical but more of a descending wedge, uh, and and that would that would be a welcomed pattern certainly. And again, any pattern that, that that begins to develop doesn't necessarily. Right now, we have the beginning of a, of this pattern, and in fact, we you know we're more like we're more like two thirds of the way through. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's going to form out. It's just always a scenario. It's something you got to keep in mind. And uh, but I, I I do like I do like that it's getting up towards this trend line. Uh, if we were to see you know we were to see it to turn lower from from this top side area here. You know, to, this would then bring in the possibility that that, that cable could then take a, a jog back down lower towards, you know, let's say 129. So I want to watch that, and uh, you know, we'll update that in, in in future webinars. And we're almost there, so you know, the next one we have on Friday, uh, we might be talking about this thing, uh, you know, and and how it reacted off of this this top side trend line. But ultimately, it'd be nice to see this this wedge out a little bit more uh, into September. And then get some kind of powerful move one way or another, uh, you know, from from the apex of, of this wedge. Uh, looking at the euro, 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 euro. So, you know, the euro doesn't look very good, does it? So, you know, I was just talking about the dollar index being, you know, a little choppy. Uh, you know, one constituent's going one way, another's going another way, and it's like, you know, how do you make heads or tails of that? And that's where you know, you gotta you gotta pick and choose your spots carefully uh, until things kind of line themselves up. But you know, yesterday, yesterday basically what we had here was you know we had a we had a decline, and yesterday looked like you know we were gonna we were gonna see the the euro pop up a little bit higher, and then it reversed, and now we're getting some follow through. So the euro's turning lower. We had a nice little reversal day yesterday. Uh, this could just turn out to be a choppy range. Hard to say at this time. You know where we're coming from around just a few days ago is is a rather significant area, right? Look at this trend line. This trend line goes back to December. Crosses under here pretty cleanly, and that's where we peaked out at. Okay, so that's something I'm I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, it, should we see a little bit more weakness here in the euro? You know, we would look to this swing pivot uh, as potential support. I mean, we do right now. We do have an uptrend in place and you know this is this is where this is where the trading the best way to trade you know the euro right now to trade a lot of these markets especially given that there's really no decisive trend one way or another is to really just kind of find levels okay find levels and then wait for momentum to shift one way or the other depending on you know whether it's bullish or bearish the, the level that is uh, so like in this case you know well, this would be a bearish you know this would be resistance uh, this would be support and in this kind of environment you know one of the one of the ways that that I've been and I've been I've been keeping my own personal trading quite light because it is August and, and I've been burnt in August before uh, and so and I've seen a lot of traders a lot of traders lose a lot of money trying to force the issue in August so it's you know even if even if there's some good looking setups you know kind of keep it on the light side because you know when volume is thin volatility is low what you you know you've got a recipe for a lot of fake outs, uh, but it can make for some good fade trades. Uh, so keeping that in mind, you know, looking for certain levels like I was just showing with the cable uh, chart. Uh, you know, I've got that trend line. If it starts to turn lower there, it might offer a little bit of a, a short trade. 
so just kind of playing the levels. But right now, you know, we've got the euro pulling off a pretty big level here. You know, but we do have some higher highs and higher lows. But generally speaking, man, I tell you, the euro is neither here nor there uh, on, from a more broad standpoint. Uh, Aussie. Aussie. Now look at this one. This one's coming up off of support. Okay. So if we go back, look at this from a very long-term standpoint. Not very long-term, but depends on your time frame. If you're uh if you're a day trader, a few hours can feel like a long time. If you're a swing trader, a couple of weeks can, a month can feel like a long time. So, but getting to back to this, uh, we're going to look at the 2013 pivot coming down over 2014, right? And then it comes down to where we just recently turned lower off of. Uh, but we have we have this sloppy uptrend in place. It doesn't have a lot of momentum, as I talked about last time. This, the, the lack of momentum in this, this trend higher here, on a more broad standpoint, suggests that, that that at some point it's going to break. But right now, we've got we've got Aussie coming up off this this trend line. Okay, you know, I mean, you could draw it, you know, you could draw it in many in many ways you, as you want, connecting different points. I, I like to see things uh, just kind of, you know, you can draw like that right there. That's actually how I have it drawn on another chart. I do apologize. I don't know why I have it. So you're you know, you're including as many inflection points as possible within reason without cutting through. Uh, you know, we're not cutting through the middle of bars. I mean, we're cutting through some tails here. But and that's how I generally draw trend lines. Um, if there is, if there are some long tails and, they're, and, they, and they line up, then I will I will also consider those. But looking right here, I've got some good inflection points. I'm trying to bounce here off of this level. But if we were to give way, given that long-term trend line and the sloppy, you know, overlapping uptrend, right? This this is a very choppy uh, overlapping uptrend. And with that said, you know, I I could see this this eventually rolling over below this trend line but again you know we we could we could bang around between support here and resistance into September so something to keep in mind but right now we're at support so you know we've got we've got cable coming up on resistance you know we've got uh, you know moving higher but coming off resistance we've got the euro turning lower we've got Aussie turn a little bit higher <laughs> kind of makes for a a ping pong market, right? Uh, dollar yen. So dollar yen is not being very responsive right now. Okay, dollar yen. When I say that, I mean dollar yen is not responding to this hundred level. Okay. Obviously, the market recently was very disappointed. Excuse me, was very disappointed with what the BOJ uh, had proposed for further stimulus. You know, it's 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 quite evident, and I'm not a fundamental guy per se. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and try to tell you, you know, my 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 broad fundamental outlook on this. But based on the price action, okay, based on the price action, you know, it's quite obvious that for some period of time now, um, the market has lost confidence in the BOJ, and and I could just tell you that from the series of lower lows and lower highs and downtrend, right? So there's my there's my fundamental outtake <laughs> outlook, uh, but getting getting down here to this hundred level now it's a little it's a little you know scary I want to say uh, because it is such a significant long term level the hundred level goes all the way back to like 1999 okay so it's it, it's a fairly big level um, but you know the fact that the market is not responding so. You know, just even off of this this trend here, beginning you know a month ago, you know we're getting lower lows and lower highs, and we've got a triangle forming. Got a nice little symmetrical triangle forming within this trend. So I could see at least just from a trading perspective, you know, short term. From a short term perspective, I could see us, you know, having this little symmetrical triangle then resolve to the downside in the near term. And you know, and based on the height of the pattern, you know, we could get a nice 150-point move uh, down towards, you know, say 
say 98, 98 and a half, uh, before maybe getting a bounce, uh, you know, and, and, re and getting back, maybe trying to get back above a hundred. Uh, so, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that, that unfolds. Uh, we'll see how that unfolds, but I do like this from a trading perspective. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, you know what? I'm going to backtrack a bit uh, because this is something that I've been talking about uh, and I should have pulled it up with Aussie, but I was going through the individual constituents uh, first of the U.S. dollar index, but Kiwi. So Kiwi is one that I told you, and, I, and I'm actually still in this trade and I am I am short and, and underwater on this thing. Uh, and it, it's, it's closing in. It's about 30 points from my stop. Uh, but Kiwi is one that, again, we're at this long-term resistance area, uh, and, and it looks, you know, it looks a little cleaner on the weekly. Looks a little cleaner on the weekly. Uh, we do have this resistance over here, and we have this, you know, we came over here and hit these this topside parallel. Uh, we're trying to make another move up on it. Uh, you know, obviously parallels are are they're upward sloping or downward sloping, so they're kind of moving targets. Uh, we had another reversal yesterday at this prior reversal. So, if this, if today, if today Kiwi doesn't start to turn back lower tomorrow, uh, you know, then it's going to negate, it's going to negate these reversals, and and then you know we're going to have to look for this thing to maybe pop on a little bit higher. But even if it does, it's going to find, it's going to find this 73, 75, up to 74. It's going to find some difficulty there, I believe. Uh, again, given given these top side top side trend lines and parallels, um, Craig Craig says take a look at uh, the pound versus kiwi. All right, so we can do that. Uh, yeah, I mean certainly certainly with with kiwi gaining some strength here, um, and. Oh, uh, Craig says audio cutting in and out for me. Oh, I apologize for that. I'm... Yeah, maybe that potentially is a better plat platform uh, to use for this. I'll have to look into that. Um, if anybody else has any problems, please let me know. But uh, get looking, taking a look at, uh, you know, I have these these parallels set in here for for pound kiwi. Uh, you know, pound kiwi is still still in a downtrend here you know and this this is you know we've got a lower we've got a lower low from over here lower high another lower high uh even though it broke above this upper parallel i can kind of take this out of the picture now um the only thing that that i have some concern with is from a you know looking at this more broadly is that there is some pretty good support that goes all the way back to 2013. all right but it certainly isn't a downtrend, and I could see it getting back towards this, you know, if, if Kiwi does really start to take off. And then I was also showing Pound earlier, getting up to that trend line. Uh, so you could see, you know, you could see that kind of, I try not to analyze the individual pairs too much to try to, to, to get a feel on the crosses. I kind of look at each chart in a vacuum. Uh, I've, I've found that it creates less confusion, makes things a little simpler. And even with that said, you know, another point that I'd like to bring up is that when you when entering uh, into a trade, say say that you were you know you were bullish on on uh, the pound, right? You're bullish on the pound, and you're uh, you're you're bearish, or let's say you're bearish on the pound and you're you're bullish on kiwi, right? Because kiwi looks like it could make that new higher high, and then I was just talking about before that trend line in the pound. You know, you could find yourself, you could find yourself maybe buying Kiwi and shorting the pound. And then effectively what you have on is a, is a short, you know, pound Kiwi cross. Uh, I've, I've had situations like that. And instead of actually rotating into the cross, I'll just keep the individual uh, pairs and, and using the, the stops and limits that, that I have for those and trading them as individual trades. Um, but yeah, in general, I, I don't like to, uh, I don't, I don't try to read too much into what one currency is doing versus the other on its own. It seems to seems to, to be a more more mess with the head than than beneficial. 
Uh, let's move on to Dollar Cad. So Dollar Cad, you know, is another one that you know we were looking at the dollar index before, and the dollar index was, uh, you know, is is making lower lows, lower highs. Well, Dollar Cad's doing, you know, doing similar. Uh, we've got, you know, clearly we've got a downtrend going on here. We've broken these trend lines from, you know, that that went back to to May. Uh, and with that said, you know, the, the benefit of the doubt right now is with the bears uh, in making a new lower low. So this is something that I'm going to watch right here. Uh, you know, as long as it stays below, say, like 129.70, uh, you know, I could see dollar cad then making, you know, another leg lower or at least at least maybe starting to chop a little bit sideways. Uh, it's certainly going to take a little bit of work to turn this thing back to the upside. But overall, you know, the one thing I do not like about dollar cad overall is, is that there is really no trend, right? So we can go back months and we're at the same price we were months ago. So it, it, it makes it a little difficult uh, to, to determine, you know, good trades in there. Uh, I mean, it's not that there hasn't been some good trades in there. It's just that, you know, if you get a good, if you get a nice little profit in there, um, and, you know, assuming that your risk reward and everything is, is, is properly aligned, you know, it's a good idea to take, uh, to take those profits, uh, once, once they meet the, you know, support and resistance and not look for, you know, any kind of real significant follow through. Let's take a look now at gold and silver. So gold is doing a little bit of shape shifting uh, in terms of this this wedge. And this is one again. It's got a long term trend line, right? Got this long term trend line going back to the 2011 peak. So this one's rather significant, uh, and it's but it's you know that long term trend line is in battle with this this uptrend that we have. And when we look at the daily. You know, this is by no means is it clean yet, uh, but obviously price is contracting. Uh, it's working its way towards a, a, a wedge. Now, I have this dotted line because, you know, and I don't really know how this is going to unfold. You know, before it was looking like it could unfold with this being the lower trend line. Uh, but it wasn't really still a developed enough pattern to consider it a triangle, uh, at least by my standards. Now it could be possibly stopping there and, you know, it could even expand out like that. So I like to see these things really start to tighten up. And that's, that's why, even though, you know, you may start to see the price coil up uh, until it actually gets a few swings within and gets, it gets, you know, a lot closer. I like to see it, you know, 80, 80, 90% towards the apex before it breaks. That way you, you kind of really know where the upper and lower boundaries of the triangle are. Uh, this, you know, doing it this way, by doing it that way, you avoid false breakouts and breakdowns. So this may never actually develop fully out. Uh, and then again, it may. So, but right now, you know, we've got a little support down here in the 1330s, low 1330s. Uh, would not surprise me to see us get a bounce back up here towards 1355, 1360. Uh, really though, given the environment, how choppy it is, I'm not making I'm not making a lot out of any of this. You know, I'm not not really reading into any of the price swings that we're seeing because at this time there's really no trend at all. This is this is a difficult environment to be trading gold to me. It's just better to kind of sit on your hands, be patient and wait. Um we've had a little bit more movement out of silver, which is you know not always that surprising. Silver is a can be a volatile beast. Um silver had some you know had this range had a pretty nice uh had a pretty nice range in place uh and and it's obviously not in that range anymore um and 1920 was the level that was actually from over here and then again over here in july and uh the other day so so basically this is this is kind of this is how i treat support and resistance as well so i trade off support and resistance but just because it gets the support or it gets the resistance doesn't mean it's a sale or a buy or a sale, right? Uh, and, and right here is a good example. So silver sold off hard, relatively hard, 
into this support level, okay? It gave no real indication based on this daily bar that it was that 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 it it was respecting that support all that much, right? You know, it, it's it didn't come down and then and then try and bounce and close the day, you know, maybe off of 1920 because I think the low here is you see right here the low is 1919.8 so 1920. Uh, it didn't come down and bounce and close you know 1940s 1950 and show that there was you know some sponsorship right it didn't do that and then the next day it, it pierced on through 1920. Um, now sometimes you'll get that you know you get that strong close down like this and the next day will be a big up day but you know Looking at this just purely from from the standpoint of did buyers step in in 1920? No, they didn't. They 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 bounced they, you know, bounce like a, a few pennies and then that's it. And then broke on through. Clearly broke on through. You know, at least like over here, if you look at this bar, uh, as it approached back down towards the support level, you know, there was clearly some buyers that stepped in. Okay, that day. So they were looking at that level, uh, or the market was, you know, had that level. You know, etched in there as as support, and it bounced off of it. Uh, over here was not the case, so then it accelerated on through 1920. Now, from a short-term standpoint, you know this is you know we've we've had this nice downtrend in place, uh, lower lows, lower highs, right, and then finally it it it, it broke down in and it broke down to 1920 and even lower. Now I was looking for 1920, but you know 1920 was support. Uh, but you know again it didn't really get any kind of uh, there's really no response off 1920. Now right now this is not a very good price action if if you're looking to be long. <laughs> okay, this is not a very good price action. Uh, it's certainly the market is not showing a lot of buoyancy at this time. So while even though it may not be the best short. Uh, just kind of sitting down here, you know, meandering. Uh, it certainly at this time is not indicating that it, it that there's there's good any good buying interest. So, I think in the near term the risk is is skewed to the downside. Now, getting back to the longer term, <laughs> excuse me. Getting back to the longer term, let's go to a weekly. Okay, so the weekly chart. What we've got here is. We've got these lows back here, 2013, 2014, 2015 adhered to that, that prior support as resistance. So old support, new resistance, broke above. You know, we, we view it, okay, we view it as, as new support again. So this was this was old resistance, broke through. We view it as new support, but that, that could, you know, maybe not come down until the 1840s. And could it spike on down lower and towards 18? Absolutely, it's silver. Okay, silver is is one that's known to kind of overshoot on both sides. Uh, so, with that in mind, yeah, the, the near term is you know looking at again getting back at like hourly, two hourly, two hour charts. Uh, the short term, the trend is lower. That's you know that's where the path of least resistance is. But we need to keep in mind that we still have an uptrend from December in place. And we are probing an, an area of significant support. Um, you know, last couple of days we've seen some pretty good selling pressure. What we'll take a look at uh, next week is we'll take a look at the um, we're gonna take a look at the commitments to traders report. And what's been going on over here from a broader standpoint is that the futures traders had been building a record long positions the large speculators okay they which is hedge funds and they're generally trend following they had built a record long position even as even as silver was going sideways they continued to add to that position okay which which kind of gave caution to the idea that, that silver could move higher because it was it was almost as if the boat is already loaded you know so uh with with there maybe not being any you know, any more firepower, any more longs to really kind of add in, uh, you know, it kind of made for a, a challenging environment from the long side. And we're now seeing, you know, we're now seeing some of that selling coming in. So, you know, the, the, the COT reports run from, you know, they're a weekly report. They run from, you know, Wednesday of the prior week to Tuesday. And then on that, uh, that Friday, you know, they, they report those figures. So with, 
yesterday having been Tuesday, and it's also including these these kind of two big down days, we should see a, a reduction uh, in, that, in the long position. And and ideally, if we're going to pull back in the support, we're going to hold to turn higher. You know, we want to see a correction in in the, in the longs. We want to see some of those longs kind of get shaken out, you know, spooked out of their their trade a little bit, and kind of reload the cannon, if you will. I I'm you know, but I'm not still. I'm not still sold on the idea that silver is going to necessarily, uh, you know, continue to explode higher just yet. But if we see that, you know, correction in positioning, we see that longer term support hold, uh, then then I could certainly see, you know, this this trend here continue to move on higher, uh, you know, as we move in towards the end of the year. That would also likely, you know, at least in the very, it would also likely be a if not a, a weaker, a materially weaker dollar, it would at least be a dollar that's that's not moving higher as well. Uh, we'll take a couple look. We'll take a look at a couple of indices. Uh, let's look at the DAX. Really, the only thing that that you know, <laughs> the only thing has really been moving, uh, you know, for the last month uh, is has been you know the the European indices, uh, U.S. indices have been a mess, uh, but you know we've had we've had a nice pull off here so this reversal day you know indicated that momentum maybe after this big strong push higher uh had weakened uh, we got a nice little pullback and we dipped below the april peak and we dipped j just above just above the support zone uh a couple days ago right and we, the market found some good buying pressure and it ended up closing back above that April low. So to me, the, the benefit of the doubt is still with the bulls. Okay, this is we still have this uptrend, and I, I still believe that we could see at least this 10,900 up to 11,000 uh, as the next likely uh, area. And so we had a nice, nice hold here of support. Now we're starting to turn back up. Now, whether whether it just becomes a nice steady move to the upside, or chop around, you know, again, if it was a if it was a little if we were in a different time period, uh, you know, it wasn't the end of August, wasn't the end of this you know kind of choppy vacation period, um, I would be a little more confident about in, in saying that that the DAX should start to to accelerate back to the upside, um, but you know, I'm not. I'm not willing to kind of go out. I'm not really willing to go out on that, on that right now with a whole lot of conviction. So, you know, I could still see some some choppiness here, and it wouldn't be a bad thing at all for this this move higher here. I mean, this was a big move. Following, you know, Brexit, this is you're looking at a 1600 point move. Uh, so if we had a consolidation period here that that went out into October, I'm sorry, September, uh, it could set up it could set up for for an, a really nice push higher. In the DAX. So right now, as long as this support down here holds, which it did the other day, as long as this holds, then we're going to have to give the benefit of the doubt to the upside because you know we have also broken. Let me uh, let me just check this for a second so we can get a better. Uh... Okay, hang on a second. Just wanted to clear it out so that I could show it from a longer term standpoint. So. One of the things that that we've been talking about from a longer term perspective that could be a, a, a big positive uh, as we as we head forward, and why I'm still at least giving the you know the short to intermediate term the benefit of the doubt to the upside, is that we broke above this this 2015 trend line, uh, which you know has its sibling parallel down here. Uh, you know we broke above this April. April peak, we broke above these peaks in May and June. Uh, this 2011 trend line that we spent much of 2016 below, we're above all that, and that's again we're holding all that as support now. So it was all resistance before, and now it's old resistance becomes new support. And so with that said, you know I'm giving the benefit of the doubt to the upside. So I I, I think that that you know on any kind of dip that we get in here, that we're going to see we're going to see buyers step up. Take a look at the FTSE real quick. So the FTSE, you know, this is another one. Uh, we got some levels back here uh, in last summer. You know, this is August, July, June. These are all pivots. 
uh, we're finding a little bit of support around the the July pivot. Uh, if we were to if we were to sink off a little bit further, so right now this this pullback that we're seeing is is rather constructive. Okay, you know we had it we had a nice this was we had a nice rip. Uh, I believe this was this was the uh, the BOE you know coming out and and being a little more aggressive about uh, their accommodations than expected. Uh, so we got that rip out of the out of out of stocks, uh, and then that continued on higher, and we're getting a nice gradual pullback so far. So we're not seeing a whole lot of selling pressure. Uh, which is something if you know if you're looking if you know which is something you know there's a lot to be learned in a retracement right so you, know, you get a nice strong push higher then you get a gradual pullback you know it indicates that there's not a lot of sellers in there okay the buyers kind of keep stepping up at every little turn you know every little lower low it makes here on this daily on these daily bars buyers are stepping up okay so so it indicates that there's not a lot of strong downward momentum so either I'm thinking we'll either pull, we'll start to turn higher from here, uh, and if not, we could get a nice, you know, we could get a nice confluence down here uh, with this this lower parallel, and and also around this July peak of this year. So we could get a nice little confluence there. That would obviously be the ideal scenario because you'd really have, you know, you'd have two a couple of different support levels from varying angles helping hold the market up. So that's something that, that you know, I think we could, uh, I, I think, you know, again, just like the DAX, more bold than bear. And we'll finish out with the S&P 500, which is just a mess. You know, I, I, I trade I trade the US indices quite frequently um, on, on short time frames. And I've done almost nothing uh, this month because there really hasn't been a lot to be done. Uh, and I feel pretty good about that. And I think that if you're standing aside and not not getting chopped up in this this type of price action, you know, that's that's a good thing because you're keeping your powder dry. We had this ascending uh, wedge break, but no real momentum kicked in. Uh, you know, we've got we've got some trend support here now. Uh, we can see here we've got some some inflection points, and you know, generally speaking, the 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 trend is higher. Oh boy, let's try to refresh that. It's Nasdaq. It's also still continues to be pointed higher. Generally speaking, we're grinding our way higher, right? So as long as as long as it you know we continue without a catalyst, I don't really see. I don't see this changing right now. You know, it would be better if we got a nice, kind of a nice explosion higher, and then a reversal before we start thinking about the short side. But right now, it's difficult to be a bear. Uh, you know, you can you can really get kind of caught up in that upward grind, and it can be very painful. Uh, so it's better to just wait for some good indications from the short side, and then, and from the long side, you know, nibbling on little on the dips and whatnot is not not a terrible idea. This is the uh, the Nasdaq. It broke above one degree that I had drawn in here of a parallel. We're looking at another one now. Uh, this again, there's really not a whole lot of reason to be a bear at this point. So you know, we may just chop sideways, but I'd say it's going to be tilted more to the upside now. If we get a big down day, a lot of selling pressure, then we could potentially skew it to the downside. Craig says, so we'll do a couple questions here. Uh, a, Craig says, AUD, NZD, down 12 days in a row on a mid-price charts. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is certainly an aggressive an aggressive downtrend. Um, you know, anytime you see these kind of consecutive down days, it's but you know just but one thing, and I, and I pointed out this before, I mean, at this point, obviously shorting uh, becomes risky. You know, the, the longer that anything extends, the closer we are, or, you know, that, that, that it's going to at least have some kind of reversion. 
Um, but in of itself, numerous days in one direction or another is not an oversold, overbought. No, but yeah, Aussie Aussie Kiwi is certainly is certainly not uh, not looking very healthy. Uh, let's, let's go back here, see, because you can see I have this little little RS question mark. Because from a broad standpoint, still looking at a possible uh, inverted head and shoulders. But this is going to need to start to clean up here pretty quickly uh, in the next few weeks if that's still going to be a possibility. And again, you know, this this pattern, this is another one that's like, like I said before, you know, many patterns don't ever, they don't ever come to, uh, come to pass. Uh, and this may certainly be one, you know, if, if, if a trader was taking an entry here with anticipation, that's going to be an inverse head and shoulders, it, the position size should be very small because at this point we don't, we do not have an actual trigger on this. We will not have an actual trigger until we get up here until the 114s. Uh, and so with that said, this inverse head and shoulders is, is still, is still, uh, under development and, and has kind of lost its it's kind of lost its sy symmetry a bit here. Uh, you know, it was looking pretty good right there. It was looking pretty good, but now it's not looking so good, right? So, but yeah, shorter term, uh, Aussie Kiwi is not, it's not acting particularly well. Uh, I had this drawn in before I took it off. That's kind of where this decline started was uh was from this trend line rejection here uh, and we've got another trend line coming up you know off the slow over here so maybe if it can continue to extend lower uh down here towards like one 103.40 then maybe we'll get a we'll get a bounce here um, certainly doesn't look good so any other questions uh please let me know uh I will field another question or two. Well, I'll be back again on Friday. All right, so 9 a.m. GMT time, as per usual. And on Friday, we'll take a look at some uh, some setups for the following week. We should, uh, between now and then, we should maybe have a little more clarity on a couple of things. You know, we were looking at that, that, that cable chart again. We were looking at that as being something, you know, getting up to this trend line. You know, by then we should see something, maybe a bit of a resolution there. Uh, you know, we're looking at Kiwi. You know, I, I mentioned that that I currently, you know, we had a big reversal day. We got another reversal day at that reversal, but if it doesn't turn lower, you know, it's gonna. It looks like it's got a little bit more room to run uh, to the upside. The dollar yen chart. This is one uh, again recapping. Got a nice symmetrical triangle. That, that, you know, going with the trend, even though it's around that 100 level, um, you know, this this could turn into a nice little continuation trade uh, to the downside uh, and, 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 you know, maybe get down into the 98s. Although, you know, at that point, I'd be careful because we're, we're you know, again, we're at that area where, you know, it's, it's pretty pivotal from a long-term standpoint. Uh, and I would say that, you know, until it gets to, you know, it's kind of like in the danger zone you know, under 105 and above 95, like there's like that range in there where a lot can happen, uh, you know, because, you know, you got to give, you know, you know, such a large significant level, you got to give it a little room, but for the short term trader, you know, we might get a nice little continuation trade here. So that's something that that's definitely on my radar. All right. So I'm going to, that's going to conclude today's uh, webinar. I hope you've enjoyed, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and again, on Friday, if you got any questions, you know, once I get done through the looking at looking at what we're going to look at, uh, you know, feel free to to fire away. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, over here. You can see at Paul Robinson FX. If you want to shoot me an email, uh, the email is probinson at fxcm.com. Uh, and I will talk to you guys again on Friday. Have a good one.